Welcome back, everybody, and what a win for Kilgore last week. Uh, coming from behind to beat Class 5A Texas High tonight, Gladewater Bears at the Jack. And this young lady right here says, I love my Gladewater Bears. Kilgore's Patrick Johnson is going to hand off to Malik Hamilton, and he does not like the Gladewater Bears. Running like a maniac right there, getting inside the five. And then Ja'Cory Smith, we know what he can do, gets it in for a 7-0 lead for Kilgore. This time, Patrick Johnson, ball back for Kilgore. Kilgore is going to go to the air, and he's going to find Jacorius on the little swing route right there. Good, oh, Chris Toombs, I'm sorry, he gets the first down. Then, when all else fails, give it to JQ, and he finds the end zone. 14 0. Gladewater's got to get something going here. So, Blake Guthrie, the signal caller, says, Let's go right to a little bit of Marcelo Jackson, and Marcelo accelerating. Busted to the middle. Will Kilgore catch him? I think they will, but what a run by Marcelo right there. Then Guthrie going to give Marcelo a break and hand it off to Darnell McKnight. Big Darnell finds it in there, 21-7. Pretty close game, but, folks, Kilgore is on quite a run right now. They get the victory. It was close, but they get it done. Nice win for Coach Wood, 35-28. Spring Hill next up hosting Hughes Springs tonight. First play of the second half, Hughes Springs defense swarms the Cameron Castleberry the quarterback but later in the third after going down Castleberry says all right let's get this thing going he's going to, have to scramble around here it's a broken play evading tacklers left and right Cameron can you get into that end zone you betcha 39 yard touchdown for the senior but U Springs would respond as running back Gabe Du Bois Punches it in from a four-yard touchdown. Hugh Springs, what a win as we check the board. Final in this one, 42-35. That one hurts for Spring Hill. Congrats to the Mustangs. All right, Chapel Hill and Tatum as we check some scores here from around Class 4A. 42-21. That a boy. Bulldogs get that first one of the year. Henderson, 36-0 over Dangerfield. We saw that one coming. Athens remains uh, really having a great year off the top. 21-24. Van, 49-42. A close one, but they went over North Lamar. Brownsboro and Rusk. How about the Bears? Big win. First one of the year. 47-33. Carthage and Gilmer play tomorrow night at Longview Lobo Stadium. Can't wait for that one. Canton pulls it out over Wills Point. 28-27. Reigns over Sabine. Big win for them. 27 to 20 in that one. Mount Vernon uh, falls victim to a pretty good Pittsburgh team. 54 nothing in Palestine. Not a good night. Coffin wins 48 to nothing. Coming up in a second, we will feature Bryson Bacon from Frankston. He's a dual role player for the Indians. We'll tell you about that in just a little bit right now. Let's get to the highlights. The showdown with Winona in town tonight as we get to the highlights in this one. All right, we're going to get you those highlights in just a minute. We do have a really cool story for you. And, you know, at halftime, imagine this. You're in your football gear, but you know what? You're in the band and you got to perform. Well, the Indians of Frankston have just a guy. Here's CBS 19 Sports feature reporter, my man Ron Moye, with the dual threat, Bryson Bacon. Well, for one Frankston Indian, football isn't the only thing that is near and dear to his heart. Bryson Bacon is a senior football player at Frankston High School, but when halftime comes, Bryson says he has to step up and play on another stage. Right there, the clock's ticking down um, last couple of seconds. I'm thinking, okay, I've got to get to this side of the field, grab my horn, get rid of my pads, and just get ready to go. I don't have a lot of time for thought in between. Even his band director says it's rewarding seeing Bryson be such a dual threat. Everything he does, we, he's a, he excels at, and we're proud of him. We love it when we see him excel at more than one thing because he's one of ours. He's our member, and we support him in all activities. It's, it's a real pride thing here at Frankston. For Bryson, splitting time between band and football has been rewarding. It's been an awesome opportunity. It's really taught me how to balance my activities and my scheduling and allow me to um, make sure I don't overwhelm myself with the two different activities. It goes to show you with a lot of determination and responsibility, you can produce something or someone special. In Frankston, Ryan Moy for the ETFinalScore.com football show. All right, Ryan, great job. Let's get to those Indians Winona highlights early on in the ball game. How about T.J. Brumley, quarterback for the Indians, the Southpaw up top to L.A. Bradford. Yeah, L.A. looking like he's Hollywood. Watch the move here. Woo! 
through the spin. Another Winona guy tries to take him down. They marked him down at the one. Come on, referees. Then it's our week two American State Bank Player of the Week. Justice Bean doing work right here. He didn't even get touched for the touchdown. Back comes Winona, though. Braxton Kincaid of Winona shows off that rifle, but really just dumping it down to Quaylen Brown. The dude is one tough customer. Gets inside the 10, then you know he's going to find the end zone. Ricket it in there. Good job by Winona. Let's check the board in this one, and it's going to be a big win for Winona. How about that? 19 to 15. To Art Tiger Country next, opening district game with West Rusk. And early on, Arps, Julian Herndon is going to get the rock, and that's a good thing for head coach Dell Irwin and the Tigers. Look at Julian Herndon. There's West Rusk guys all around him. Doesn't matter. And then Isaiah Baker is the other one-two punch in that featured back. Is he going to get to the end zone? Oh, great hustle by the West, uh, West Rusk Raiders right there. No score for the Tigers. And this is the rifleman I've been telling you about. D. Starling up top to his man. Braylon Thurman, great job right there. But, hey, not a lot of points scored early in this one as Case Medlock finds to go to Trey Breaker right here. Barker, but ruled a no catch. Who would win this ball game? Final score is going to be Wesk Rusk. Wow, that hasn't happened in a while, but they take care of business, 31-23. All right, let's head over to the Tyler Paper headquarters where Trevor Pill joining us now on what has been very hot on social media. Trevor, what a game by JT tonight. I think they're still playing. I'm sure you got some tweets from that one. Yeah, that was uh, very intense and uh, a lot of yellow flags out there on the field. And it's great that a lot of teams are now playing their district teams. This is when things really matter. A lot of trash talk going on on social media, but I'm going to bring it down to the good stuff. First, we have the Grace Community Cougar Cheerleader of the Day. Miss Glennie sent this one in as this little one was excited to cheer on her Cougars. I bet she was extra excited as the Cougars pulled out the win in their first division game. Then Jennifer, she sent in some love for her friends over at Wills Point for their homecoming. Checked them out, lined up with their moms. She said they are tired and worn out. It was a great homecoming, but they are glad the week-long activities are over. And then over at Tatum, the football team was back in elementary school. I've seen this a lot this year, more than I have in the past. The varsity players from multiple schools are out in the drop-off zone, opening doors and assisting the younger kids that will soon fill their shoes, get out of the car and across the street safely. Players involved with the community never hurts. That's it for social media. Remember to send your fan photos to ET Final Score on Twitter and Facebook. Back to you, Eric. All right, thank you, Trevor. Always good to have the fans involved. Second break right now. More scores and highlights after this.